Welcome to Alex G's Aquarium, everybody. And today is Heating with Fire, part three. Let's take a look and see how the radiant heating system is working on the 1600 gallon system. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Of course, we're gonna be talking about the heating system that I installed on the 1600 gallon system, along with how it's operating. It's been going for about a week now, and there's some things that I've learned about the heating system that I think are kind of important to understand, at least in my case. When I was going to start to use the radiant heating system for the first time, I literally noticed the Boeing in the 720 gallon tank just before I was gonna test it. I unfortunately had to drain the 720 and build the big bracing system around it, which I could say right now, there's still water in the tank, we're still testing, but everything still looks good. We're gonna give it a little more time before I, I declare it problem free for now. But the heating system needed to be tested with all the water in this entire aquarium system. I didn't feel comfortable just running it on just the 480 gallon alone or just the sumps alone with the refuge tank because I didn't really feel that that would give me a true test. I did one minor test between the two sumps when they were operating for a few hours and saw that it was working. I didn't bring it all the way up to temp. I only moved the water a couple of degrees, but I wanted to see how long it would take to heat this whole system because it's important to realize that if I have some kind of failure, I kind of would like to know how long it takes to get everything up to temp. Now, with the tank running for about a week before I started this, I had one thing I had to complete before I could turn the radiant heating system on, and that was the covers for the 265 gallon tank. I did not want to heat this water and allow an even higher amount of evaporation because that tank has no top on it and has a ton of surface agitation and splashing going on. It is raining in the, off the cover of that sump in there. And if I didn't have that, I don't even want to know what the humidity levels would be in the fish room back there. Moving back to the heating system though, it started off with taking the temperature reading of the tank and understanding where my temperature was. Now, I don't have an apex yet installed on the system, which would be nice to really get a true graph of the temperature. And the Renko controller is only adjustable by one whole degree, which I don't really think is a problem, but I want to definitely experiment with this for a while. The water in the tank after running for about a week in here, having the lights on every day and the reflow hammerhead running all the time, the temperature on the tank water heated up to 70 degrees according to the Renko controller which the basement is typically between 68 and 69 degrees. So I figured the, the trapped heat between the lights and the pump raised that temperature up just a little bit. It also let me understand the temperature of the tank at the start of this test. And since I don't have an apex, I couldn't exactly see the whole curve of the heating system. I started writing it down because I figured, well, this is probably gonna take a couple of days just to get the tank up to temperature. Surprisingly though, the system was able to heat all 1,600 gallons from 70 degrees to 77 degrees in under 24 hours. I thought that was rather impressive, that amount of temperature in that amount of time. So I really didn't understand how well this radiant heating system would work. Now, thus far, I've been monitoring the tank every day. I've also purchased some air and humidity temperature sensors, which I got right at the start of this test because while I'm also testing the heating system, I'm also testing my humidity mitigation to try and understand, have I done enough? Can I truly control and mitigate my humidity levels in this tank? The more testing is gonna be done on that, it is ongoing. Let's go ahead now and walk through the entire radiant heating system from the hot water tank supply all the way to its return there. Then we'll go back, talk about the Ranko controller a little bit and how it operates this heating system. Here's the hot water tank in my home. It's just a typical 40 gallon hot water tank, nothing special, copper plumbing coming off. Matter of fact, the copper plumbing comes up and then it goes down right here. Now these supply lines are for my washer dryer, hot and cold. 
I simply tapped in with some shark bite connections here and I've insulated it going through. Notice I've also put the shutoff valve here which I explained in the first heating with fire part one video. The lines then come down, there's a check valve here. Then we have our Grunfoss recirculation pump. This is a bronze recirculation pump. You should not be using cast iron for this. And then we have our supply and return lines. We have our supply line here, which I just kind of have hanging down right now with some zip ties, which goes into this 120 gallon sump here. And this is just wrapped up in a big coil, end to end, comes out. This brighter line here that's going up horizontally is the supply line from the hot water tank and it's run about 99 degrees right now. This is the line that's coming out after the heat exchanger and it is running oh about 93, 94 degrees roughly. There's about a 5 degree drop in temperature between the supply line here being at 99 and the return at 94. This just gives everybody an idea of how this heat exchanger is working as far as how much heat is getting exchanged into the water. Goes back up on the side. And then runs along the top here. All the way back down to a shutoff valve and ultimately it goes back in the drain line of the hot water tank. You notice there is a boiler cock valve still here. I did not take any functionality away from the hot water tank. Don't ever close off or remove valves from this and not put any back. You've got to have a way to drain these if, if it's needed. The Renko controller, pretty easily set up right now. It's 76 degrees and this is set, set for degrees Fahrenheit. 77 degrees with a one degree temperature differential and that it's set up for high. All this really means though is that the Renko controller is set up to have a set point of 77 degrees. That is when it will shut itself off. All this Renko controller does is basically act as an on off switch based on the temperature of the water. Now I want this to heat the water up to 77 degrees. By setting it at 77 degrees, I also have the temperature probe wire going straight down right into the outflow where the water comes in here from the tank. I did that because I feel at this point at least in testing that putting it any closer to the heating coil probably wouldn't be best. Putting it as close to the tanks as I can without putting it in the tanks is probably going to give me the most accurate reading. I figure the tanks are turning over at least every 15 to 20 minutes, everything is flowing through here. So it should give me a fairly accurate reading pretty quick. And I haven't noticed the temperature spike above 77 degrees, as I know there's going to be a little bit of a lag between this temperature probe shutting off this water because it's going to have a little extra heating in here. Once I get an apex controller in here and I can really start to read in tenths of a degree, should help me out a lot. One drawback to this controller is that it only works in whole degrees. I need to look and see if Ranko has a model that does parts of degrees, either halves or full tenths. It would be nice to have a little bit more controllability on it just to tweak it a little bit more. I know that Pinpoint makes a really good temperature controller that does work that way. Um, I've had one in the past and I think this is a really good alternative. These are only like 50 bucks. And they do a pretty good job. It's an industrial temperature controller. Essentially, that Grunfoss pump is wired into the controller, and then I have a plug wire to the controller, so this acts as its on off switch. Pretty simple device. And thus far with the tank, I've noticed it only has dropped down to 76 degrees. I have not seen it drop down below that, other than the very first day I ran this when the temperature differential was set to 2 degrees instead of 1. I'm sure the big question everyone has is, how do you think it works? Well, thus far, 
I think my expectations of this have been exceeded. Not only in the amount of time that it runs, but also the fact that I only catch this heater running about once a day. It might run for a little while to get that full degree back, but it hasn't been very bad. Now, one drawback I have noticed, if it's been running a while and you go to take a shower, the hot water's been depleted a bit. It's still warm, but it's not the normal temperature that you'd expect your shower or hot water to be. I think I could combat this a bit. I have the hot water tank set to a fairly low temperature right now to have more efficiency in it. If, I, if needed, I could raise the temperature of the hot water tank, but if I do that, I'll have to kind of play around with it to see how that changes the efficiency of it heating the tank. I don't want to heat it too fast. A nice gradual rise in temperature is what I'm looking for. I'd really like to hear everybody's comments and questions on this heating topic. really think it's fascinating. You don't see it a lot in tanks uh, until they start getting to very large sizes. That's why I looked at this. But to be honest, everybody, for like 300 bucks, you can make this work for a tank. And I know that might sound like it's a lot of money, but when you look at the number of heater failures that people have and the expense and cost it takes to run a heater in a tank due to the amount of electricity it consumes, I think this is a lot better option. I really want to see long term what it does and I'm going to continue to monitor it. I'll probably do heating with fire part 4, part 5. I want to see how this changes when I add salt to the tank, if there's any kind of difference in efficiency. I really don't see there being one but we'll test it anyways. Overall, I am happy. I, I think it's working great. I love the concept, I love the idea. Thank you to tldesigns.com for putting this out on PDF and the internet. I wouldn't have known exactly how to do this without that, so thank you very much for putting that information out. I really do appreciate other DIY folks out there taking the time to put this information out. That's all I have for today's video, everybody. Just wanted to give a brief overview of how the heating system is working and so i said i think it's working good of course i want to give a big thank you to all of my subscribers and everybody out on youtube watching i really do appreciate everybody's viewership the comments and questions section of the video i enjoy interacting with the community and it's a lot of fun every week putting that video out and seeing what people have to say about it as always if you like today's video go ahead and give it that thumbs up. Let me know I'm doing a good job with my videos. And of course, if you dislike the video, that's okay too. Go ahead and give it a thumbs down. That's okay. And as always, if you want to see more on the 1600 gallon system, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I've been putting out weekly content now for a few months and we are getting really close. Just a few more weeks, I'm thinking we might have the possibility of having marine life in this tank. So stay tuned and I'll see you on the next video.